Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on using async await in JavaScript. So async await is simply an alternative to dot then and dot catch syntax for handling the results of promises. So what I have here set up on my page at the moment is a fetch request. So this is making a get request to an endpoint and I'm handling the result in the way that you would using the dot then method and then I'm handling the result in this handle result function that's also using the dot then method to wait for the result of get data. So when you are handling the result of a promise such as a fetch request, what the then method does is it accesses the result of the promise and then you pass in a function to the then method. So what the then method does when handling the result of a promise such as the result of this fetch request is it waits for the result and then it provides the return value as a parameter in a function that you pass in to the then method and then you can do something with that result and then the return value will be passed down to the next then statement which in turn waits for the previous then statement and then you can do something else with it and you can have several then statements one after the other like we have here now down in this handle result I'm calling this function get data and then I'm using the then method after calling get data because the return value of get data is a promise. So when I call this handle result, what's happening is fetch is running and all of the then statements are running. And then after that's done, it's returned. This then statement is waiting upon all of the then statements to complete and the return to come through. And then the then statement here is logging the result to the console. And there's a property within the object that's returned URL, which I'm just logging to the console. So what the then method is doing in all of these examples is waiting to handle the result of a promise and then doing something with the result and then maybe returning that result so it can be passed down to the next then method or just doing something with the result like we're doing here. This is the end of the then method chain. Now, wouldn't it be nice if instead of calling the then method and having to pass in a function, you could just use a word like wait before a promise and that would do the same job. And that is essentially the idea behind async await. It's to replace these then methods with a keyword and that keyword is await. So what I'm going to show you in a moment is how you can rewrite this fetch request and the handling of it using async await syntax. But before we do that, I just want to write out a simpler example to show you how async await works. So down here, what I'm going to do is to write a new function and I'll call it my function. And all it's going to do is to return a simple value. So I'll say ABC. Now, if I log the result of calling this function to the console, it will return the string ABC. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because to be able to use the keyword await to wait for the result of a promise, you have to do that inside a function that you have to modify by using the async keyword before it. Now, in JavaScript modules, you can use the await keyword outside of a function prepended by the async keyword, but in regular JavaScript, you can't. You can only use the await keyword inside of an async function like this one. Now, using the async keyword already changes the function in an important way, and that is that the return value of this function is now not going to be ABC, but the result of a promise. So the return value of an async function is always going to be a promise. Now, if we look what's being logged to the console as the return value of my function, you'll see that it's not ABC, but it's the result of a promise which contains ABC. Now, what you need to do if you want to get the value ABC rather than this promise object is to handle the result of my function as a promise because it is now a promise result. So I can access the result dot then and then I'll log the result of that to the console. Okay, let's check that out in the browser. So you have to handle it as a promise using the then method to return the result. Now, this is a bit of a contrived example because you don't need a promise to return ABC, but you'll see the importance of this in a moment because we're going to transform 
this getData function into an async function, and it's going to return the value of the fetch request and then pass that down to handle result. So when we're calling handle result, it needs to handle the return value of the getData function as a promise. Okay, so I'm going to comment out this simple example we had down here. And now let's rewrite the handling of promises within these functions using async await syntax. So starting with the getData function, the first thing we need to do is add the async keyword for the function so we can now use the keyword await within the function. Now I'm going to start the rewriting of this function by using the keyword await here. And this is going to wait for the result of the fetch request. And I'm going to save the result of that in a variable called res. Now, because I'm not going to be using the then method after fetch, I can include a semicolon afterwards to end the line, just like I would in normal code. Now, an important feature to be aware of here is that this entire function, everything below the fetch request line is now not going to be executed before the fetch request returns. So everything's waiting on the fetch request. So what this allows me to do is to take this if else statement and I can just insert this there. I don't need to use the await keyword because I'm already using the await keyword to wait for the result of the fetch request. And so this line is not going to be executed until that result is returned and stored in res. So res is available to me here. Now in the code using the then statements, I needed to return res if res.ok was true. And that was to make it available in the next then statement. But in my async function, I don't need to return res for it to be available in the rest of the function. So I can shorten this by saying, if res is not okay, throw an error. Okay. So if the response is okay, this error won't be thrown and I can continue processing res on the next line. Okay, so the next thing I'm doing in the original code is I'm taking the result, which is JSON, and I'm converting it to a JavaScript object by calling the JSON method on it. So the JSON method actually returns a promise. So you know by now that we need to use the await keyword, and then I'm going to call res.json here, and I'm going to save the result in a variable called data. Now in the next then method, what I was doing was just returning data. So that then becomes the return value of the function. Now I had to use the return keyword before fetch here because if I tried saving the result to a variable and then returning at the end of the function, the function wouldn't wait for the value of the fetch request to be returned and the return value of the function as a result would be undefined. But using the await keyword here, the function does wait. So I can say return data. Okay, so that is it for the rewriting of the get data function. You can see that the syntax now is much more like familiar regular code rather than the then method with the nested functions. So I'll delete all of the old code now. Okay, so let's check that everything's still working. It should be because the handle result function is calling get data and treating its return value as a promise, which it is because an async function always returns a promise. So I'll save this and open the browser now. So when I refresh, I should still be getting the final two results here back that I'm logging inside the handle result function. Okay, so everything's working as before, but instead of using the then statements, we're now using this synchronous looking async await syntax. Now what I'm going to do is also use async await for the handle result function. So again, I need to use the async keyword before the function so that I can use the keyword await within it. Now the get data function, which we're calling at the beginning, returns a promise. So for something that returns a promise, we can use the await keyword and I'm going to save that in a variable called data. Now what's happening at the beginning of this function is the get data function is being called and the entire handle result function is waiting for the result of get data to be returned. So that means waiting for this entire function to return something 
including all the awaits in here. So it's awaiting the return value, which involves waiting for these previous awaits. Now, when it does return a result, I have the value stored here in this data variable. So now what I can do is just log that to the console as I was doing before, but this time no need for the nested functions inside of then. So the only difference is this time I'm calling the result data. And now I can go ahead and delete the previous code because the new code is doing exactly the same thing. So let's check that everything is working in the browser now. So I'm getting the same results back as before, but now I'm using this familiar looking uh, synchronous like syntax. Now, the final thing I want to cover in this video is how you handle errors using async await. So using the then method, what you would do is use the catch method and this would catch any errors that occur within the then statement or series of then statements. So what you use with async await instead is a try catch statement. So the way that this works is you wrap what you're trying to do in the try statement. So I'm going to move all of this up into the try statement, just clean it up a little bit. And afterwards you write a catch statement in which you have available to you the error as a parameter. So what I'm going to do here is if there is one, I want the error to be logged to the console. So now if something goes wrong within the try statement, including anything within the get data function that's being called within it, a catch statement is going to be called and I'm going to get some information about the error. So I'll make the request a bad one now by deleting a character from the URL. So let's see the result of that now in the browser. So the result is taking a little while to come through. So we now get an error on line 13 because the URL is bad. And then we get some information about the error logged within the catch statement on line 29. So type error failed to fetch. And if I return to the code, you can see line 29, that is where the error is being logged. So the catch statement is being triggered correctly. That is it for this tutorial on using async await to handle the results of promises. If you found it useful, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.